وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Living in the West Now Living in the West uh, as some of you may know is a series of episodes where we look into the lives of the minorities living in the West the Muslim minorities in the West trying to provide and ideas on vision and strategy for this group of Muslims. I have with me Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad from the Muslim Research and Development Foundation in the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa Sheikh, in previous episodes, we've spoken from the beginning. What's the reason we need a vision? The reason this mass of people need a vision? How to believe in a vision? And what the basics of the vision was? And we spoke that it was iman, it was ibadah, tawheed in its. Uh, holistic approach in encompassing everything. I asked you to explain this in the, in the previous episodes and we came to the conclusion it was an individual priorities and community, communal priorities. We spoke about the individual priorities, safeguarding the tawheed, safeguarding the, the pillars of Islam and abstaining from major sins. Now, let's look into the communal priorities. Is there an analogy? Are they very similar? Do they take the same form? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. As we have said about individuals, we have to uh, achieve two levels in terms of community. Uh, once we spoke about community, the first level is the basics of the Tawheed have to be fulfilled, and then after that we need to maybe achieve a higher level. In terms of the aspects of Tawheed, the main aspects of Tawheed need to be safeguarded and need to be secured for the Muslim community as a community, not as individuals. It's a very important point for us to not look at individuals but the actual community itself yes. as a body, as a whole. As a body. Yes. And what does this mean? We have to differentiate between individual aspects or individual scope and communal scope. Yes, it is true that a government may deal with individuals differently, separately. But to deal with the community as a whole, it might be something different. For example, let me give this example. Uh, we see and we know this that the uh, Western governments are so lenient or they have a degree of flexibility when we, they deal with Muslim individuals as individuals. However, when they deal with the community as a community, so this flexibility or, or this level of tolerance is not there anymore. And as a proof for that, maybe you know that Islam is not officially recognized as a religion in most of the Western governments. Mm, it's true. However, mm -hmm. in terms of on an individual level, maybe each government will deal with a high level of tolerance with individuals in terms of their practices and in terms of their faith. This may be covered because of the European law, uh, the European law in general. Mm -hmm. This might be covered because of that, but do the do or do those governments approve or recognize Islam as a religion, as an official religion in these governments? As far as I know, it is only Spain, three countries in Europe uh, recognize Islam as a religion. Spain. Uh, Australia and uh, Spain, Australia and 
uh, Belgium. These are the three countries, as far as we know, that recognize Islam as a religion. Mm -hmm. Other than those countries, as far as I am aware, it is not really recognized. Islam is not officially recognized as the second or as a religion in that government. Now, leave this recognition, although this is an aim we would like Muslims to achieve, Muslims in the West in general, and we have mentioned this to a number of organizations, Islamic organizations that operate on a European level, that they need to work to achieve this kind of recognition on the European level as well as in each country of Europe uh, level. So, <coughs> uh, leave alone this, okay, mm -hmm. leave it for a moment, but at least each country, once each country looks to, this, to that community, to the Muslim community as a community, they should not force them to accept something against their creed or against their tawheed, something that violates tawheed directly. So this is the main, first main point, the tawheed, their creed, from a community level, they can't compromise upon this. Yes. They can't be oppressed upon this. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And again, the point that I would like to stress on is that we should differentiate between individuals and community. Because an individual, the individual, he may have uh, an area to maneuver with within, a bigger area. Mm -hmm. But a community, as a community, they might not have that area to maneuver and to move around. Okay. So if an individual is saying, well, my tawheed is secure and it is safeguarded, as an individual, yes, but maybe not as a community. And this is one of the sayings of many people, uh, especially in the West, I'm okay personally and this is the way they see the Islam but really you're saying on a community level they have to check as well yes yes why because each one first of all from Islamic point of view there mm -hmm. is nothing called I me alone there is nothing you are part of a body subhanallah you are part of the body in the Quran mm -hmm. Allah Jalla wa never spoke to individuals mm -hmm. Allah Jalla wa was to, Allah Jalla wa is speaking to the whole body of Muslims. Have you ever seen in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhi amana? No. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. As a group of individuals. Wa kunu ibadallah. All of you together. Innamal mu'minuna. Ikhwa. Etc. So it's talking about the community. And al mu'minu, al muslimu, akhul muslim. So no one should say, well, I am as an individual. I am secure, I have said, guarded my tawheed, full stop, that's enough. No, you have to talk about a community as a community. Now, also, who is the community? What forms a community? It is you, me, him, and other people. So we are individuals, but together, whether we accept it or we do not accept it, we are considered to be a community. They are looking at us as a community. So we have to take those considerations that safeguard our tawheed as a community. And as an example, by law, uh, in some countries, some, uh, the Muslim community, not the individuals, have to participate in some celebrations that include kufr, clear kufr, or clear shirk. Take, for, for, for example, the issue of Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Now, irrespective of the historical facts about Holocaust, or irrespective of our stance towards uh, this incident, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about the celebration mm -hmm. itself. Sometimes the Muslim community is forced, as a community, and especially the leaders of the Muslim community to participate and not just only to attend the Holocaust uh, celebration, but to participate in the prayers, etc. And these prayers are non-Islamic prayers, not only non-Islamic prayers. They violate the center of our identity as a community. They violate Tawheed. 
So this is an example of an action or a law that is forcing the Muslim community as a community to cross the boundaries of Tawheed. Take the example of swearing an oath. Hmm. In, you know, if you go to the court or if you want uh, to <coughs> maybe sometimes to get your license or to get other documents as an individual, you have to swear an oath. Now, in many Muslim, in many European countries, there is freedom. And they are telling you, if you are a Muslim, then you can swear an oath by your own faith or according to your own faith or religion. Mm -hmm. However, this is maybe uh, in terms of uh, the official, the official uh, prerequisites, you can say, or the official... Uh, the, the official body within the government, the official mm. bodies within the government. However, I do remember that we received a question from one of the European countries about Muslim, uh, the Muslim individuals or Muslim, certain Muslim groups participating in certain activities. And they were commanded to swear an oath. To swear an oath according to that organization's belief system. And the Muslims told them that we are Muslims, we cannot swear that oath. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we are, they said that they are a secular organization and they have to swear an oath to represent this secular tendency. So they are not allowing any body to join that organization except if they swear an oath according to the secular values they hold. So this is on a communal level. We are not talking about individuals. We are talking about Muslim organizations want, uh, Muslim organizations want to participate in that body. Now, if it is a must for them mm -hmm. to participate in such bodies, then the Muslim community in that country needs to take care of this because this is a matter of violation of Tawheed on a communal level hmm. and they are bound to participate in such organizations. Okay, I've, I've got a few comments <coughs> on this. We're going to take a short break and inshallah I'll return to these comments. So we're going to leave you for a couple of minutes inshallah and return. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this new episode of Focus Point. The new generation is has the good the habit of reading more than before. The Jewish question was named basically the problem of Jews who lost their function in society. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Living in the West. Sheikh, just before the break, you spoke uh, about uh, uh, the community responsibilities, priorities. And the first aspect of this you said was safeguarding Tawheed on a community level. And you gave some examples. You said, for example, attending a service where you have to do a prayer, something which contradicts Tawheed in its basic form. So I, I've got a question for you, a rather skeptical question. So what about democracy, Sheikh? I mean, we live in the West. And really, we're not forced into accepting democracy, but really, we're really pushed into believing democracy, accepting parts of democracy. Um, isn't this democracy breaking parts of Tawheed, Sheikh? Because this itself is an identity. This itself is something which is, is against uh, Islam in, in it's the way it deals with things. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. First of all, the issue of democracy, I think it is a very wide topic. Okay. Maybe we need to tackle it in 
uh, separate uh, episode. But here we have to differentiate between something that you are forced to do mm -hmm. as an individual or as a community. It doesn't matter. But you are forced. By law, you cannot go against it. Or something that you are pushed to accept. Mm -hmm. For example, freedom. You said uh, democracy. Yeah. Freedom. Freedom. Everyone is talking about freedom and that it is one of our, our values, etc., etc. This is something and to be by law bound not to go against it, this is something else. This is one thing. The other thing is there are certain aspects of democracy that themselves, the Westerners, they never accept. So those matters that they don't accept within democracy, as well as there are certain aspects that they say that these aspects or they, these beliefs contradict freedom, the principle of freedom, mm -hmm. but they say this is not what we are talking about. Then we can use these as premises to go and speak against democracy and to go and speak against freedom mm -hmm. and to tell them that that's why we don't believe in this type of freedom, but we believe in another type of freedom. Similarly, about democracy, we say that we don't believe in this type of democracy, but we believe in another type of democracy. This is when we talk to them. And sometimes we can say that's why we don't believe in democracy as such, but we have to explain what do uh, what don't we accept? This is very important. So the, I mean the levels of differentiation between democracy and various aspects of democracy and various aspects of freedom. Okay. F for example, mm -hmm. and once we talk about democracy, democracy may mean that to allow the uh, mass to participate in choosing what is better for them. Mm -hmm. This is the general meaning of democracy because you know it is coming from the word uh, demos, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you, the, the Greece. The Greek, uh, the Greek terminology. Yeah, the, 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 the uh, Greek uh, terminology. Now, means the right of people. Mm -hmm. Now, the right of people, the right of people to select the ruler or the right of people to select the law. We have to be careful because here there are two things. And many Muslims are confused between both, uh, both selections or both aspects of democracy. And many of our young people are confused. They say democracy is kufr, full stop, without understanding these aspects. For example, the right to select the ruler this is not a kufr. This is not kufr at all. And maybe you can say that this is very similar to shura. Of course, shura, we believe that shura is more advanced and is much better than this part of democracy. But this has some traits of, of shura in, in the way it, it, it takes a leader, yes? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Th that's why there are many differences. And we believe that our shura is better than their democracy. Mm -hmm, but the principle of Democracy, this part of democracy, which is giving the people the right to select, this, in essence, is also uh, in Shura. Giving, not the people, certain people, the right to select. Okay. So the principle of giving the people to the right to select, this does not violate Tawheed as such, to okay. select the ruler. Even if we expand the issue of or the realm of Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, the scope of Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, and we said instead of having Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, let us expand that and include, for example, all adult, all adults. So uh, uh, th this group of people, they're the ones who select 
uh, say for example the leader in in, in an yes. Islamic in an Islamic, Islamic environment okay. in, for an Islamic state so now but if we this. expand mm. that then there is then, then this might be acceptable from an Islamic point of view and democracy will look like that mm. so that part of democracy is not kufr so let's look at the other part the laws now yeah but uh, it is very important that we distinguish which is which which part is considered to be kufr and which now, part is No, this is something is which is very clear now, but it's something it's also new to many people, I think, because yes. they've always taken it as one, democracy. As one. democracy. Now, selecting the law, mm -hmm. selecting the law. Here, there is a difference between forcing you to select a certain law or you go and say, well, I am against that law. Mm -hmm. And this, see... The Western people, they don't believe in Allah Jalla wa'ala. They don't believe in the divine. Mm -hmm. So they wanted a system. And they found that this is the best system for them. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have an external authority to tell them what is right and what is wrong. So how do they know what is right, what is wrong? Mm -hmm. By introducing this uh, system. So this part of democracy... It does not force you to believe in it as the best system. But it may force you to participate in, have your, in having your say. Mm -hmm. And there is a difference between both. If they say that no citizen will be a citizen or will live in this country unless he believes strongly in democracy then we can say, yes, we need to look at it because this might violate Tawheed. But if they say that we need our citizens or people living within mm -hmm. our country to use democratic process in order to achieve what they want to achieve, then this is something else. Here they are not forcing you to believe that democracy is the best system. It is true that it is the best system for them but for Muslims, we believe in the divine. And we believe that Allah Jalla wa ala is the one who legislates for us and he is the only legislator. And that's why, that's why we have to be careful and we, have, we should be careful when we're saying that democracy is kufr as such. Now, even the other part, when they say, for example, let us vote for homosexuality. Hmm. Imagine that they allowed people to vote for homosexuality. Now you, as an individual, why don't you go and speak against homosexuality? You as a community, we as a community, why don't we speak against homosexuality openly? Why not? Mm -hmm. This is our problem. They are not forcing us to accept the principle that they are putting, but they wanted us to have our saying. Now this is not a simplistic uh, explanation of democracy, but this is the, the reality, the mm -hmm. essence of what is going on. Now, when they force us to accept democracy as a belief system, and no one can go against that belief, then we need to take this matter seriously, and we need to, uh, to consider it from all angles. Okay, Sheikh. Now, when we come to uh, all angles of considering this, Sheikh, there's one point that you put in there. And you spoke about the hukum of Allah, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, a Muslim implements this in his life. This is the difference, okay, between the West and the Muslims. We implement the hukum of Allah. What about the court system now in the West? Because the court system in the West, we have to live by it, we use it, we abide by it. It's sometimes the only recourse we have. Isn't this breaking the connection with Tawheed Sheikh on a community level as well as an individual? Well, see, we have to be careful. Uh, and you are bringing a very big topic. I, okay. I doubt that we can cover it within the coming few minutes. But we have to be careful as Muslims. We should be mature enough. And not because this something that considered to be against Islam, something considered to be kufr, then as a whole it is kufr. We take it as a lump sum and it is kufr. Mm. And let me just conclude by, I think we have a very limited amount of time, by... Okay. Uh, giving you this joke and it is a real joke it happened with me <coughs> one time we went 
to one of the parks in London with some Muslims and some children. And <coughs> the time for Dhuhr came and we wanted to pray Dhuhr. So we said, where is the Qibla? This is the sun here. And so, so the Qibla might be in this direction. <coughs> then another brother took his watch and he said, well, according to my watch, the Qibla is this direction. So I said to them, let me play this trick. I said to the brother, subhanallah, now this is the sun created by Allah. And this is our body, our bodies. And we can know that this is the direction of the Qibla. And the Qibla is a ibadah. A ibadah. We are worshipping Allah Jalla wa'ala. And you are telling me by this sa'a, which is made by the kuffar, this watch that is made by the kuffar, and this watch made by them telling me how to worship Allah Jalla wa'ala and telling me the direction of the Qibla? Believe me, the brother was so amazed and he stopped for a while and then he couldn't say anything and then he accepted my argument. So he re-evaluated re and he accepted what was going on? Yeah, he accepted that and he said, okay, we'll go for this direction. Then I said, subhanallah, ya brothers, is it a matter that we just put in your argument, any word of kufr inside the argument, and yes. then you will the argument? You will win the argument? No, that is not right. We have to be mature. It is not because a court system is uh, a kufr system, then if we are involved in it, then we are involved in kufr. No. And inshallah, we will explain that okay, in I think detail that's a good point for us to start in the next episode. Jazakallah, <coughs> Sheikh Haytham. Well, that's all the time we have for today on Living in the West. I hope you can join us in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته